brunch on a budget, Portland style. Much of our country lives in food deserts, so I didn't want to explore Oregon's bounty. I wanted to hit an everywhere USA chain supermarket and make an amazing meal with Portland attitude. Life's too short to eat amongst the crowd. It's more fun to be original. I sought out the daring, axe-wielding chef, Jason French, and challenged him with a $30 budget to make a crowd-filling brunch. We're gonna do breakfast, right? Yeah, I think we should do brunch. brunch. It's early. We'll call it brunch, breakfast. Okay. It's the same thing. It's right. just you eat brunch later, right? Brunch. lunch. Briz lunch. Yeah. Uh, okay. Chili lime, pork rinds. So we're gonna do a very flavorful variation on a very classic a New Mexican dish called migas. Uh, cheese, Colby, and Monterey Jack. These are the best chips. I don't know why exactly, if there's some sort of, if it's the corn, if it's the oil they fry it in. It's um, the old ladies making them. It's the old ladies making them. Hood River, Oregon too, so that's always Look at that. Us. We just went local. Scallions. Just some spring onions. So these are some of the ingredients you would find in northern New Mexico. Chorizo. Okay, so here's my complete confession. This is like a regular grocery store. It's sure. not a farmer's market, right? Right. So if I wanted to make something special, I would drive right by this place and say, no way. Correct. This is a staple store for, I would say, a majority of the population in the country. And so the the what I'm always interested in is trying to bring food culture to a conversation where there's nothing wrong inherently with this store, but if you want to make amazing chef-driven food, you might have to work a little harder in the aisles. The Whole Foods and the chefs of the world don't have any magical power. It's just, this food is accessible to everybody all the time, so. Mm -hmm. But if you ever have questions of what you would be able to do, the power of shopping in a store like this, <laughs> easy big microwave, it's there for you if you need it. We're not gonna use it today. Um, I might have to go back and get it. Jason scoffed at my $30, and he was right. We did it for 20 Well, just about 20 Are we on budget? At Jason's restaurant, Ned Ludd, he doesn't use any traditional stove. It's wood-fired only around here. But don't worry, no wood fire required to make Migas at home. Cooking is not rocket science. Cooking is not a chef-driven reality. More people are cooking for themselves than eating out in restaurants every single day all over the world. Seems like that's shifting, but you know, <laughs> it's good to be a chef. Um, so with this Migas, you just put everything in the pot there? So I'm kind of like building the flavor profiles. As a chef, if you, you know that if you throw it all in together, it'll all just be kind of like a soup or something. And so this way, what we're doing is building the flavor profiles. The chorizo was cooked off first, but I didn't pour any of that fat off. All that fat went back in to help cook everything else. The uh, squash and corn go next. The jalapenos go next. Because if I fried out the jalapenos too hard, they wouldn't have, they'd lose their kind of pepper quality as well as their chili heat. I mean, the chili heat would still predominate, but they'd lose that kind of a little bit of crunch and texture. And the scallions, the same kind of thing. And so now the beans, since they're already cooked, we just need to reheat. And then I'll add the eggs and the chips. The whole idea behind the migas is you get it all in, you get this, the egg in there to start to set, and then when we feel like this is getting close to being done, we'll add the chips. And the idea is that you kind of fry the chips out, um, but you keep them crunchy and crispy. There's technique to everything. Everything has to work kind of with one another and in concert with one another and the building and the layering of flavors is the way that you achieve gourmet style status. Not only did Jason bring us under budget, he made enough to easily feed 20 people. That's a dollar a serving for a banging brunch to impress any of your snobby food friends, i.e. me. Like the greatest freedom you have is to take back the power of what you eat and how you feel as a result of taking control of your diet. 
the world doesn't need another Whole Foods. The world doesn't need another grocery store. I don't even think the world necessarily needs another farm at this point. But we need to really reinvestigate the network of food distribution mm -hmm. and the network of food production and then how it's distributed to our communities in order, if, if we want them to thrive. Yeah. The network of food. It's a big idea and probably time for us all to embark on this very important conversation. But over wine, of course. Next time on Original Fair, we dive deeper into Pinots in Oregon and take a look at flavor pairings. For more adventures in food, subscribe to our channel.